Today I played a prodigy from England who is 23, 54 rated, an absolute monster who's 14 years old. His name is Sohum Lohia and he had the black pieces in this game against my white pieces. I go with e4. I had a lot of prep this game, e5, knight f3. We go into an Italian with bishop c4 and now my opponent pulls knight f6, d3 and h6. h6 is always suspicious when you see this. This in a classical game means deep prep by your opponent, and rightfully so, after h3, my opponent played d6, c3, and then g5. g5 is a relatively modern system in which black will transfer their knight to g6 to then go to f4 and establish a nice fortress on the king side and castle and fianchetto the bishop to g7 and essentially just put all their pieces there. So against this, of course, there's a psycho psychological component. I just got prepped against. My opponent has some prep and surprised me, right? There's always that. But I just decide to play my game, put my head down, and focus on good moves of the Italian that I already know. So I go with a4, taking space on the queen side. My opponent develops the bishop, and now I go a5. I want to play a6 to plummet to this queen side to completely cap black's counter-attacking chances. My opponent goes a6 to mitigate those risks, and now I was deciding between b4 and queen b3 in the game, but ultimately I went for a quicker queen b3, which attacks f7, and here it leaves black with like three choices to defend. And really, I, I loved the way that I forced or semi-forced this play. So my opponent defends f7 with queen e7, but there's a problem here. The knight can't transfer to g6 anymore, which is a big criteria. This knight will stay on c6, and the knight is famously paralyzed on c6 by this c3 pawn, which just takes up all of its squares, which I found such a nice detail of placing a queen on e7. If queen d7, the bishop is the issue, so you, you choose your poison, really. So queen e7 is played, I go knight bd2. I want to bring my knight to e3 to take up all these weak light squares in the center to stop this push, and if this bishop is traded for my bishop in the future, my knight can hop to f5. So there's always some good counterplay there. Rook b8. My opponent wants to defend this pawn and free their bishop to e6 to trade off my bishop. Okay, this doesn't change my position. I go knight f1, best move of the position. Bishop e6, and then I go knight e3. My opponent was seemingly quite nervous. And during the game, he was not completely sure that he was, like, better here because I'm stopping a lot of the counterplay, and I love that about this. Is like, where does black progress? G4, I just trade, and I think I'm a bit better. D5, I have this completely covered. B5 is always something that I looked at during the game. If the rook takes, I have like queen c2, and this pawn's always weak. It's an isolated pawn. And if B takes, this pawn is just for free. All of black's counterplay is played against, and I think that my opponent's prep for him backfired at this moment in the game. Queen d7 played to transfer the glorious knight to g6. I go g4. Now I'm stopping all counterplay on the queen on the king side with g4 here. I was really happy to play this move because now black is capped at zero counterplay. Knight e7, which is not that good of a move if I can find the right plan for white. Try to find the white the right plan for white in this position. It's really hard to find, and if you do find it, the deep engine says it's plus 1.06. It's really strong for white. And the solution is h4. You're obviously giving the g4 pawn many times over. If bishop takes, you just take on, on f7 first with check, and then you deal with the rest then. If knight takes, you can take on e6 first, queen takes, trade this queen, and then you win a piece. So that's less than favorable. Okay, if you take my h4 pawn, I go knight takes h4, and I just completely corrupt this f5 square. And again, knight takes is not good because of the bishop takes line, and I win. And bishop takes just gives a pawn first and foremost, and then advantage for the white pieces as I dismember your king here. So h4 was a great move, but I missed it. It's just hard. It's counterintuitive to look at this. I was looking at plans in this position, heavily considered d4. I actually go for something quite interesting here. Rook a4, which the engine says is pretty much a mistake. But look at my time. I have 25 minutes left in this position, and I've used up an hour after the first, what, 14 moves? It's crazy. I have 30 minutes left on the clock. My opponent goes for d5 now in complete shock of this position. 
Here my opponent is sacrificing the five pawn outright while giving a tempo on the queen. I mean, I was lost for words. So for sure, the first thing you calculate is knight takes. If knight takes directly, queen here, this is what was played. I swap pawns on d5, knight f takes d5. And the idea is that my knight here is heavily attacked twice. And once I move it, here black has very active pieces suddenly in the position, which means that it's enough compensation for the pawn that he gave up. Knight f4 was played to attack this. A little bit better was actually just simple castles, and black just assumes a better position, because I think my castle side is just so weak on this diagonal. But knight f4 is what I had predicted, is like you're attacking the weak d3 pawn, like, for sure. It makes complete sense. So I have to find knight f5 to survive, but a human would defend this pawn like a human would. So I was thinking of d4, which gives knight d3 check. And here you can't take because bishop takes queen. So my king has to move. King e2 is the only move that defends this bishop from the fork. But then it's just like I'm just giving up so much play. Like my king's always in the center. And then, yeah, this gives an equal position. But if you put a deep engine on, it's like a little bit better for black. So I didn't want to go into this. Instead, I went all the way back with my queen defending on d3. And as you can see, now I'm in time trouble. And my opponent is as well. My opponent has 19 minutes on the clock, I have 12 minutes on the clock, and it's a very early in the game to be in time trouble, 18 moves in. I need to win this. If I win this, I have beaten my strongest player OTB since returning to chess in August. Bishop d7 is played after a long thing. I was sure that my opponent was gonna swap here, so like bishop takes, pawn takes, to not give a pawn, and then knight d3 check is so nice. I have king f1, and then black is just like completely killing me here. I was sure this was gonna be played, but no, my opponent plays bishop d7, which is a weird move, less good move. And here, where would you go with your rook? Comment down below, I'm excited to, to see your comments. For me, I don't know. If I go rook down here, I, I officially lose two tempi of bringing my rook to a4 and then bringing it back. That's like just the concept. If I bring my rook here, it's not seeming that convincing to put the rook to b4. So I thought, if it's, in a, if it's an endgame, I'll go rook a3 now and just go here. The best move is to play rook a1, anticipate an endgame, and the rook will be fluid once the endgame happens, once more tr pieces are traded off. So I learned this a lot from this game, and this mistake will recur later on in the game, and you'll be like mind blown of how big this is a mistake. It's like a long-term weakness, it's crazy. So bishop c6 was played. This is the idea of my opponent. He transferred the bishop to d7 to then maneuver it to c6, and now on, on this very crazy diagonal. So I play d4, another inaccurate move. My opponent plays queen f6, a complete mistake. After rook d8, black is putting pressure, I guess. Bishop e4 is also good. These are moves that are very hard to find, especially when you have five minutes on the clock. I have six minutes, my opponent has five minutes. Queen f6 is played on the board. I don't know why queen f6 is played. I go with d5, inaccurate. I give back the pawn, so after rook d8, putting pressure on d5, but not only that, pinning the pawn. I mask the pawn with knight b4, so completely block it out. Give the pawn back in exchange for tons of trades. Queen f3, my opponent should play knight f4, but instead plays castles, I castles, and now we trade queens into a completely equal endgame. 27 moves played. We both have a minute and two minutes on the clock. It's completely stressful. And here I want to be ambitious. I see that my opponent is struggling on time, struggling on position. Psychologically, he's doing like this, and he's doing, he's doing that sound, right? So I have to push for a win here. So I go, after rook e8, I go b4, defending my pawn. And now you're gonna see my rook is contingent on defending this pawn from this bishop. And this is like a little micro domination on the board from black. Knight e7. Interesting move. I think, you know, knight e5 is the very simple move attacking my bishop here. Bishop e2 is easily responded to. But the knight sits really well here. Okay, knight e7 is, is very, very interesting to try to attack both of these pawns. Now I go for h4. And if we put on the game review, which is, yeah, it's a mistake. <laughs> h4 is a mistake. I'm trying to attack these pawns. And if you take, I want to have like f4 things. The problem with f4 is they're like there's like double attacks on my bishop. That's not... I get defended anymore. It's completely trash. But anyways, I pressure my opponents because I'm pushing. My opponent has 40 seconds on the clock. My opponent defends with bishop f6, had three seconds left on the clock. I was looking at the clock, I was like, bishop f6. 
And here I have equality at least after this. Bishop takes, takes, takes. And like b5 here pressuring the queen side. It's completely simple and easy to play out. But I don't do this. I go for, <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing, f4. Really, really, I'm down on time. Another mistake. f4 is very ambitious, obviously. On takes, I want to go g5 and play against this bishop. The bishop goes back, and now I go f5 or something like this. <laughs> but then there's knight takes f5. Like, like, we're not calculating anything in this time scramble. It's completely time scramble that decides this game, I have to say. So f4, my opponent goes knight d5, attacking this and attacking my bishop twice. After the game, my opponent said, just bishop d2 and you're fine. But I think that after bishop d2, at least black has knight takes b4, just like winning a pawn. But the engine also recommends, like, g takes, or knight takes. Uh, yeah, so, like, I was comfortable with this, so I just give up my bishop here, which is the best continuation. I take on g5, attack this twice. My rook takes on e3, and we swap bishops, and now h takes g5. And I'm scared to take back this pawn here because rook takes, and I have less than good ways to defend this. On rook here, rook g3, and I just lose a pawn outright. In an endgame, that's really, really unsure. I mean, this is maybe a draw with best play by white, but it's really hard to defend this. And so I actually have king f2, rook here. Yeah, I lose this pawn, and I might lose the game. So I saw this, and here with one minute on the clock, I play king g2. Just giving a pawn. <laughs> I just give a pawn for no reason, and I'm threatening, yeah, and I'm giving this other pawn. It's like completely terrible. But now you really see how I need a rook, a second rook in this game to defend here. Like without this rook, there's no counterplay on f7. There's nothing. And it's, it's rook a3 is my mistake. That long term appeared on the board once, once a lot of pieces were traded off and this weakness became apparent. So I go rook f3, which is completely losing, but just a nice sideline here, counterplaying by giving a pawn and threatening this. You know, you're pl you still have play here. You know, you can go like g5, g6. It's pretty losing, but I could have still played active. Instead, I played rook f3, and before playing it, I saw the win for black. I played it anyways. I don't know why I do this on time pressure. Okay, I had two seconds on the clock, but still, like, I'm playing something that I know is losing. Rook d2 check, forces the rook down, and now this pawn is just steamrolling down the board because my rook my king is contingent on defending my rook and this pawn is just deflecting my king all the way through so here just like h2 is winning but my opponent plays rook e1 check and it's made into like after rook f1 h2 and it's, it's made terrible ending to this game in time scramble it just made me realize at what point i need to practice my blitz more i need to play more blitz online so more streams on Twitch for that. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and next round, I am playing an 1800 who knows 20 moves of theory. Like in every line, it's so scary.